So that leaves us with question five, uh, so explain the implications of each theory for well-being. Uh, so just very briefly, um, <clears throat> the main implication is going to be that the subjective theories seem to allow uh, for people with disabilities, uh, a wide variety of disabilities, to be able to uh, achieve some level of well-being since well-being just con consists in their um, quality of their experiences on the experiential theories or on their desires being satisfied. And so on those theories, well, if a person with a disability, even if they're missing all their hands, uh, arms, hands, feet, and legs, and, and so on, if they experience life as going well, then it's going well. If they are still able to satisfy all their desires, then life's gone well for them. Uh, so the real trick or real issue really comes up on the objective list theory. Um, so hopefully it's pretty obvious. So the idea there is then that, uh, you know, if the objective list um, correctly uh, says that, you know, in order to actually achieve well-being, you have to be able to uh, either get around un 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 unimpeded or, or whatever, uh, and your disability doesn't allow you to meet that condition, well, then you're out of luck, right? And your well-being is simply uh, in, the, in the hole, so to speak. So that's, those are the main uh, or, or broad stroke implications.